Hello, Tim Wilmot here, and welcome to my watercolour demo of a street scene. Now, have you ever lacked some inspiration of what to paint um, at a stumbling block of what subject to go for? A li little while back, I painted a scene from a TV programme, and this is my second attempt, taking a picture from a travel programme. Now in this watercolour, I'll be covering a few watercolour techniques like laying down a wash, wetting wet, uh, blending colours, because in this demo I only have three colours, more on that later on. Uh, a bit of negative painting, as in painting around uh, figures and the cars. Um, some dry brush strokes as well we'll introduce. And I'll also go through the, the normal stages of a painting and cover such things as timing. So this is my reference photo. Uh, as I say, it's come off a travel program. Uh, it's in France, I think it's southwest France, the Dordogne area, maybe a town like Duras or um, Aimé, um, somewhere down there. But it could be anywhere. And it's quite a nice scene from a watercolour point of view. It's a sunny scene. It allows us to have plenty of lights and darks. We've got a nice bit of bright sunshine hitting the left-hand building. So the sun is coming from the top right corner. A nice bit of sh shadows as well we'll introduce. From a composition point of view, we've got a nice border on the left hand side with those buildings, the right hand side of the street. And also what's quite nice is that tower, that archway right at the end, sort of leading your eye, the, the road going away from us and um, going towards this nice tower, with, which will introduce a bit of interest um, there in the sort of middle portion of the picture. Uh, we'll think about introducing some people as well um, we'll change um, the people that you got in the photo, this this uh, lady unfortunately bending over there. Um, but we'll introduce maybe some figures over the right hand side. Um, yeah, and uh, just just a, a way of also this 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 demo is a way of looking at a scene like this and simplify it because as you may know if if you see my previous videos, I paint in a, a loose style. So we have to simplify things. And we've got lots of complicated the vertical lines here of the windows and architectural details, which we, we do need to simplify. So starting with our outline sketch. Now I'm using Saunders Waterford paper very good quality paper, great for watercolour. This is 300 grams in weight to 140 pounds in Imperial and it's quarter Imperial size. So it's 15 inches by 11 inches. And it's an, a not surface, it's a medium texture. It's not rough, it's not ultra smooth, it's in the middle. So starting with the initial sketch and from the left hand side, I'm using a, a 3B pencil here, quite a soft pencil, um, quite thick as well. I'm often asked, do you mind in the, in the finished painting, some of your pencil lines showing, which inev inevitably they will do. Um, but no, I don't, don't mind that. I think it adds to the appeal of um, a fresh watercolour, some of those outline uh, pencil lines showing through through a wash. So that tower there, I did a bit of cross hatching. Sometimes I will do that on the sketch, just put in a bit of cross hatching where there's going to be some definite shadows and that generally wouldn't show um, in the end painting those pencil lines won't show because the the paint will be so thick on top of it that uh, it won't show through at all take a bit of care over the archway and again we'll just add a bit of shading there underneath 
So I'm just thinking about the major elements of this of this picture. Let's get into some vertical lines just to help me. As I'm doing that, I'm looking at the left-hand border and trying to make those lines as parallel as I can, not too precise. And then the bottom of the street, getting the perspective right. Tiny bit of a curve there. The road sort of sweeping around to the right. Now a car. Uh, so we'll keep that car there on the left hand side. Again, a, a simple shape, the windscreen, the body of the car underneath, some indication of where the shadows might be. And then maybe another car behind it rather than it sitting on its own. And those cars, from a composition point of view, they're, they're joined together as well. Um, so the, uh, and that's quite, not, quite nice about a row of parked cars, having them all joined together. You're just thinking of one shape as a whole. And um, just if you look at the roof lines, almost like a, a cityscape where you're looking at, across the, the tops, of these tall buildings, um, ups and downs there. So let's get in these two figures. Just loosely drawn in, starting with the head, torso, legs. Now these these will be in the shade, so um, we won't see all of their details in the finished painting. So the right hand buildings getting in initially these guidelines uh, for the perspective and the different levels of the building. That right hand pavement. Now some windows, again a little bit of cross hatching where I'm going to go in with my darks and have a little bit of deep shadow. Get in, I must remember that little window as well, just adds to the, that, the charm of that medieval tower there at the end. So I'm constantly looking at my scene and thinking where the, the major shapes are and uh, major areas of darkness, major windows, doorways, um, different levels of the building as well, vertical lines, maybe drain pipes coming down from the rooftop. Very basic, as you can see, very basic um, roof line there of the uh, the rooftops. So before I start with my first wash, just a little bit about the palette there on the right hand side, a limited palette. Uh, this is a plastic palette that I often take on my travels with some outdoor painting and there's just three main colors and neutral tints so I've got a the, the red is a rose opera they're, they're all from um, a French manufacturer called Sennelier but you could choose any um, any any sort of combination of, of colors like this uh, a, a blue a red and a yellow 
but the red I've got is Rose Opera. The yellow is a yellow light, but it could be any yellow, um, cadmium yellow or something like that. The blue is called a Cinereus blue, if I can get that pronunciation right. And we've got a, a neutral tint there as well. So you can see I've got a few, um, four mixing wells. And I started with a, a little bit of base color on those left-hand buildings, which are gonna catch the brightest of the sunlight. And then I've gone in with the sky. Um, you can see I've gone over the building. I've gone over the edges of my outline sketch. And this is going to allow me to have a nice soft edge, which you can achieve with what in watercolor paper um, with these two washes that are still wet. We're blending them in. So it's going to be a nice soft edge between the two. So that sky was just almost taking my pure scenarios blue, a little bit contaminated with whatever was down on that wash before. Now this middle tower, in the same way uh, I'm painting in on top of the blue sky and we get a nice soft edge, adds the effect of some hazy sunshine, a distant object, no sharp edge there. And then coming down. Now the brush I'm using is a Raphael brush. It's a soft mop brush. So it's got, it's, re, it's retaining a lot of water. Um, it's got a nice edge to it as well. This, this Raphael brush, I, I find they've got a nice balance to them. Um, quite a short handle, uh, quite thin at the top. And uh, generally I don't hold the brush right at the tip. Um, it's sort of halfway, halfway up or at the end, which I find uh, just gives me a bit more freedom and adds to a looser feel. So we're doing a bit of negative painting around those cars there. We want them to be, they're going to be the brightest part of the painting. So it's quite careful to paint around those. And again, with this Raphael brush, it's got a nice edge to it. Um, so you can do some quite precise work. You can, you can almost do the whole painting with one brush. Uh, if you've got a good, good brush that, that has the, the qualities of, uh, re retaining the water and a good edge and a good point to it. And going back, everything's still quite damp as you can see with the, the glistening in the, uh, the glistening of my spotlight there in the, the top portion of the, the painting the paint the paint's still quite damp so i'm going back into it again with darker color maybe also a little bit thicker as i'm going into that damp wash trying to trying to make the paint just a little bit thicker now coming towards us, darker. Keeping everything quite warm with these lovely ochre type colors of the walls here. Add in a bit of coolness for the road. The road's a little bit um, bluish, coolish compared to the pavements and the, the buildings on the left and the right. Mop up down the bottom there as it's coming down. I've got a slight slope on this painting. Um, around about maybe 10, 15%. Can't do any more because uh, it would make for quite a difficult camera position. Now as that wash is still damp, I can do a bit of lifting out as well, as well as adding more pigment into it. I can, I can lift stuff off just to add a bit of lightness there. 
the middle of the road or a bit of extra sunlight hitting that area of the uh, hitting that area of the ground. So just let everything gradually dry now. Um, what I also might do is just lift out a little bit of the lower part of the roof of that far tower, just where the sunlight is hitting it. So it's just slightly lighter than the than the tower, the, the, the bit above it, and not make it too tidy. Go in there with my fingertips and just move things around a bit or smudge it out. So let everything dry now before we go in with the darks, some shadows. And I'll use, uh, again, that same mop brush. So the shadows is mainly a mixture of that blue and the red. Sometimes I'll darken up a little bit with the neutral tint. So this mop brush gives me a nice sharp edge. So starting with the lighter shadows, if you like, in the background there. Um, and a bit of a diagonal shadow underneath the the uh, roof of that tower there, just to give an indication of the direction of the sunlight and another sort of dimension to the painting as well. So that bottom right hand corner I, I reserve for the real dark so it's being closest to the neutral tint it's just a handy area too to have my real dark mixtures so on the left hand side even though the light is hitting that left hand side it's, it's actually quite dark underneath the, the eaves of the the roof so starting with that first this will dry a little bit lighter than this so you've got to think about that when you're adding in your darker colors with watercolor it generally is going to dry lighter so you've got to try and compensate for that maybe going in darker than than you than your intuition tells you um, because of that because of the dry the 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 nature of it drying lighter And also having a limited palette, I, I see a lot of people with with 101 colors in their palette. And for me personally, I, I would get very confused over what color to choose. Um, and just having three uh, makes life easier and does introduce some nice effects when you mix, mix those colors together in different combinations you just got to experiment with the the ratios that you're adding in so just very lightly here just defining some major windows and doorways on the left hand side using that edge of the mop brush I could I could have used maybe a 
small or medium synthetic uh, uh, um, a pointed uh, a round brush for this a slightly smaller brush for this detail as an alternative so I added a little bit of water there just to make it slightly lighter and with a big mop brush you very rarely have to go go back to your water well um, it's, it holds so much moisture that you can just keep thinking about the color these, these color combinations um, without having to keep going back and adding more water and just helps um, maintain the flow and continuity of your painting right uh, getting down to the bottom of that left hand building so the bottom left that that mixing well in the bottom left hand corner will predominantly be the reds it's a warmer a warmer area I sometimes spend as much time mixing colors than than actually applying it to the paper right uh, right hand building now starting with the rooftop bit of a jagged edge not too precise and that um, bit of bleeding that we had when we put in that first wash that's gonna just help the freshness of it the looseness of it and as we're laying down this wash here I will leave out little tiny areas here and there bits of the paper showing which again just helps the freshness and leaving out here some shapes for windows which I'm, I may paint back in if there's too many you can't you mustn't overdo it but I'm um, just leaving out a few little windows there sorry about the glare in the top portion of the painting but you can see I've gone in with more of the darks and here I'm actually mixing on the paper which I sometimes do in those larger areas using paper like Saunders it does it's a cotton based paper and I find that the drying time is a lot slower so you've got longer you've got a longer time to work at work on things you don't you're not pressurized so much with time um, so that's an advantage sometimes it could be a disadvantage if uh, if you want to speed things up um, but of course you can use a hairdryer just to speed up the drying but it, it stays it stays damp quite a long time especially when you're painting indoors as I'm doing now so we've started at the top gradually working our way down we'll come all the way down and go across the road up the other side So I'm trying to follow those lines, those initial lines I put in for the different levels. Now a bit of negative painting around these figures. 
we went over them with the first wash but the second wash um, they'll be I think they'll be slightly lighter than their surroundings now as we're coming over to the right hand side that bottom right hand corner we don't want too much detail in there so going to be quite brisk quite quick with this area that neutral tint you can see when I added it to the portion above um, it immediately sort of spread out uh, I do find that neutral tint tends to do that it's almost like um, there's a bit of oil in it um, and it just makes it makes for quite a nice nice effect in watercolor when you apply it into a damp wash and it suddenly it suddenly oozes out um, into that area now slightly lighter for the bottom the road and you can see there that the darker wall bled into the pavement which doesn't matter slightly cooler for the road surface so I've reached up for the top right corner that top area generally reserved for for, for cool cool blues and this street scene we've got a nice um, introducing a nice little horizontal a few nice horizontal lines of shadows yeah dark <laughs> blot out that second figure there just make it different from the first one not have them identical Now, as this is still damp, I'm going to, as well as lifting off with a brush, you can lift off with a paper towel. So I've just got a, a crunched up paper towel and sometimes I'll make an edge with it so I can, I can lift off a, a straight line as I did there on the, on the right hand side there, halfway down. Um, but just lifting off little bits here and there doesn't make we don't we're not left with too much of a monotonous um, color and with a straight edge there do you see um, lifting off a, a middle lighter area down the road so left hand pavement a bit warmer than the road surface so I added a bit of yellow there. So the top, that top well is predominantly yellows. If I'm doing lots of foliage, it might be an area where I'll, I'll make, make my greens. So maybe a tiny little bleeding with the, where the road surface joins the pavement. Now, on the left hand side, nice bold shadow. Picking up a few details of some windows as well as I'm coming down. You can sometimes see as I'm using this brush, I am sort of spinning it around um, just to make sure I've got that edge still. So 
so I was almost running out of water there with my brush so it enabled me to make it just a little bit lighter in that bottom left hand corner and then a bit of lifting off with the paper towel not too much that should be all right so I've got a smaller synthetic brush now for more detailed work and this archway needs some special attention need to be quite careful with this it's um it is almost a focal point of the painting and it needs to be absolutely right getting those curves right and the uh, the fact that we're looking at it from from the side um, that shadow is not too symmetrical and then down to the base, adding a bit of contrast there with the light car as well. Another good thing to introduce into a watercolour that those contrasts of light areas up against dark areas. So um, in this example, the light windscreen um, and behind it, darker shadows. So again, like the first wash, make sure that second wash is 100% dry before going to the next stage. And the next stage will be to add in a bit more details with a smaller brush. So let's get these two figures in. Now when I do figures I invariably start with the faces, um, start from the top, work my way down and so these figures are coming towards us and then add in a, that's a dark jacket for the right hand figure and then trousers and legs so being in the shadows I don't generally um, emphasize the legs they they're sort of uh, quite weaking or can be quite weak in color maybe a little bit thin or have a little bit of lost and found a few gaps in the legs as well this will dry a good bit lighter so now that second figure let's have a blue top bluish, bluish top. Connecting with the first figure and not too much detail on the legs.
and then car windscreen. I could have left that um, unpainted, that windscreen, if I wanted to give the impression maybe of some brighter light somehow hitting, even though it is, it is in the shade, um, the impression of some sunlight hitting it. But uh, I've decided to paint it in, come a little bit darker towards the bottom of the car. And you can see there as I did in that dark, that darker color it bled back into the lighter wash of the body and then some shadows, darker shadows underneath. Smudge it up a little bit because it is in the shade. You end up with dirty, dirty fingertips with this technique, but yeah, just smudge it out. Or I could have gone in with um, some clear water and just uh, just um, added a bit of clear water there just to make it weaker, make out make a weaker edge. Like that distant car, a little bit of shadow underneath. So now I'm just going to go around the painting and pick up little bits of details here and there. Um, we need to do the windows as well. A bit more definition to that rooftop. Yep, so some, some windows here. Not all of them. Just painting in a few. Especially those that are closer. So it's mostly vertical lines, but there are a few horizontals underneath windows, some little signs, the supports of signs sticking out. darker area there. Not sure whether there's a gap in the building or a doorway. So as we come towards this windows get bigger and we're using some dry brush strokes here do you see? Not too much water on the brush. Almost, well, it's quite thick consistency. Now the, these are old, old streets here. So we've got to try and give that, try and make that appearance with these little marks that we're, we're making um, little blobs here and there and scrapes and dry brush strokes. those far buildings try and resist the temptation to paint too much in there that is the light the lightest area don't want to be too too precise in there that little window 
bit of darkness under the roof and some kind of structure, a little circular clock or window. Let's add a stripy vest to that second figure. And then some lines coming down to that person. So we're, we're connecting the figures with their background, which is generally a good thing to do. So they're not out on their own. So a few verticals, long verticals, delimiting some buildings from each other. Try not to overdo the figures, especially the legs. Just a gentle shadow underneath them, like we did with the car. Not too, not too dark. Now there is this pizza sign, which I carefully painted around on those initial, or the second wash, when I went in with the dark shadows. Again, a bit like the archway, it's a nice little focal point on that third of the picture. Carefully with my sign writing skills. Pizzeria. Even though it is in France. That's some more darks on the left hand side, like we did with the right hand side, defining windows and doorways and horizontals, thinking about perspective and vertical lines as well. Shutters and things like that, just to give it the appearance of a French medieval town scene.
and then add a, a few horizontal lines to that car for the the bumper. A bit more definition to the side of the road there, the side of the pavement. Being a windscreen, just add a bit of darker colour on that left hand side. It can be quite tricky doing windscreens if you look at them on a bright day because they're curved and they're reflecting their surroundings. It can be quite tricky to get right. So I've added a few more diagonals there. Again, just like the major shadow underneath the roof of the tower, just giving the impression of where the sun is coming from, the time of day. So there's actually not, not much paint on this brush now, but still just adding in little tiny marks here and there just to help with that loose feel and breaking up big areas. Let's add in some tail lights to this car. As bright a red as I can manage. This is quite a a bluey, a bluey red, this rose opera. While I've got some, it's quite dark now. Will the uh, I can go into some of these windows, doorways, make them a little bit darker, especially in the corners. Notice those doorways on the right hand side. It's Again, it's lost and found. It's not a continuous line. I've broken it up, um, helped by that the the wash when it dried. It wasn't um, all one tone. It uh, because I added that darker neutral tint into it. It bled a little bit, spread out. So I think we're nearly there with the darks. Another line across that car there, making it look more like a car. A 
And so we're giving it with these strokes as well, we're giving an indication of the the surface of the road dipping down into the middle. These dry brush strokes, they helped having a slightly rough surface of this Saunders paper. Yeah, I think we're probably done now on the those darker details. So we're getting towards the final stages now of the painting. And the last stage will be to add just in just to add a few little highlights with some white gouache paint with a smaller brush again that um, clock or whatever it is on that tower now I mustn't overdo these highlights with the this white paint there's a tiny bit of lightness on the tops of these figures heads and their shoulders very faint dry brush stroke again try not to overdo it and some careful horizontals get another one in there where the sunlight is hitting um, these supports coming out from buildings sometimes do a little bit of highlighting for people's ears and noses Maybe just a tiny bit on those cars not too much And I think we are done. So this is the finished painting, which I've just cropped a little bit to uh, fit in with the wide screen. But we've got the main elements of the painting. So a street scene, a uh, photograph taken off a TV program. Um, we've changed quite a lot of the elements of the scene, as in some minor minor change around the cars and introducing some figures. We deliberately kept it loose as well. We thought about the composition, um, the fact that that end tower sort of leads your eye into the painting past the cars and the figures and I also covered the washes as well um, when we went in with that first wash and we we to keep air is quite soft we went in we did the sky and then we went in with the 
um, the warmer colours of the rooftops and the side walls as well and they, they sort of blended into each other which leads to a, a pleasing effect with watercolour something you can do with watercolour that's a little bit difficult with other mediums so I hope you like it um, catch up looking at the pizzeria sign it's time for my pizza um, look forward to catching up with you on the next video which hopefully will be in the next uh, week or so's time um, please keep sending me those photos if you've got any good uh, ideas on photographs or subjects for future paintings please email those to me Timothy Wilmot at gmail.com T-I-M-O-T-H-Y W-I-L-M-O-T at gmail.com you can catch more of my pictures um, all the pictures I paint up on my blog stroke website timwilmot.com t-i-m-w-i-l-m-o-t.com and you'll also find information about uh, workshops and demonstrations I do I also do online workshops so one-to-one -one sessions with you if you want to if you have some challenge you're facing with watercolor then we can work together on that on a one-to-one -one session via the web wherever you are whatever location whatever time zone just let me know what time suits you uh, there is a charge for that I'll, I can uh, notify you of the charge depending on what sort of workshop you want but please let me know if you're interested as I say thanks very much for watching and I'll catch up with you next time bye bye